How are you guys doing? Good. Y'all remember me? I was only gone a, a Sunday and, and two Wednesdays, and several of you have come up to me saying, who are you? It, it's so good to have you as a visitor here today. Um, let, me, let me explain to you uh, where our family was for a little over a week and a half. Julie's father, he's 88 years old, and he had open heart surgery. And they had uh, to replace his heart valve, very serious surgery. And so our family um, headed in that direction. And then afterward, after the surgery, just a few days later, I had a meeting up in Century, Florida, with uh, a wonderful congregation up there. I preached Sunday through Wednesday and the meeting was a great success. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you for your prayers. It meant so much. People were calling and texting and Facebooking and just, you know, trying to communicate to us that, that they were praying and that they loved us. And man, it just meant so much. And I just ask you, continue to pray for Julie's father. He made it through the surgery, but he's got a long way to go. And uh, I, again, I just want to thank you for your prayers that uh, we made it home safely as well. But if you've got your Bibles, turn with me to Psalm chapter 88 this morning. Psalm chapter 88, and we're going to be looking at verses 13 through 14 in just a few minutes. We're concluding our series entitled Faith Shakers. And what we've been doing in this series, if you're just coming in on the tail end, is we've been looking at several things that many times can really rattle our faith as Christians. For example, um, two weeks ago, we talked about the question, why do bad things happen to, to good people? I mean, it, just, it seems at times that, that God just isn't fair. And then last week, we, we dealt with the question of why, did, why didn't God answer my prayer? I mean, I believe that He could, I felt like He could, but, but God didn't answer my prayer the way I felt like He should. And today, we're going to deal with, with one more topic, and that is, I don't feel God's presence. How many of you have ever felt that way? You know, maybe you are going through some sort of, of financial trouble. You know, maybe you've got more uh, going out than you've got coming in. I'll never forget, a couple of years ago, um, Julie and I, our house that we had built, the paint just basically just melted off of the, the outside exterior. And so we had to have our entire house, which was two-story, we had to have that repainted. That same year, our well, it went down. And they basically had to replace everything, everything with, with our well. And then on top of that, that same year, our air conditioner went out. And it was just like, okay, God, where are you? You know, you, you ever felt like that? I mean, God, where, I, I just don't feel like you're, you're with me right now. You know, maybe for, for some of you, you know, you've, you've had a loved one who's gotten sick. Or maybe you've had a loved one pass away. Or, or maybe for others of you, you've, you've lost a job. But, you know, when, when bad things happen, when things don't go our way, we begin to, to question, God, are, are you really with me? You know, God, are, are you really near and and I want you to know this morning that you're not the only one to to feel that way. If you look at the text that I gave you Psalm 88 verses 13 through 14, this is what the psalmist says to God. He says, "But I cry to you for help, Lord. In the morning my prayers come before you. Why, Lord, do you reject me and hide your face from me?" In other words, what, what the psalmist is saying here is, Lord, you know, it, it just, it, it doesn't feel like you're with me. You know, I, I just don't feel your presence. And, and what I want us to do today is I want us to wrestle with that thought because I, I think that probably if we're all honest, 
there have been times in our lives where we've dealt with this same thing. God, I, I just don't feel like you're near. Now, I want you to know this morning, and I've said this from the, the very beginning of this series, I'm not going to be able to answer all your questions. Okay, and I, I would be very arrogant to think that I could because I'm not God. And I don't know why certain things happen certain ways. I don't know why God necessarily answered your prayer differently than the way you wanted Him to, or why bad things are, are happening in your, your life. I, I can't answer all those questions. But what I can do is share with you four different biblical possibilities as to why some of you might not feel the presence of of God. And, and here's number one. It may be that, you know, you're distracted. You know, God is, is really with us, but, but at times I think we, we, get it, we get distracted, therefore we don't really experience Him. For example, here's a great illustration. Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 40. It says, as Jesus and His disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. Okay, so, so notice if you will, you've got Martha and Mary and they have opened their home to Jesus. And you've got Mary over here who is sitting at Jesus' feet. I mean, she is enjoying Jesus' presence but then over here, notice what it says about Martha. And I think this is what happens to us so many times. It says, but Martha was what? Distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. Notice Jesus was right there in her presence, but Martha was so distracted by just all the preparation and all the stuff going on around her that she missed the presence of the Lord. She didn't enjoy the presence of the Lord like, like uh, Mary did, her, her sister. And, and I think so many times as Christians, this can happen to us. You know, we get so distracted by what's going on at work. Or we get so distracted at school. Or, or we get so distracted with sports. Or we get distracted with hobbies or entertainment like television or Facebook or email and texting and video games. And all these worldly things can distract us. How many of you have ever felt this way? Man, I've got to get one, one kid to soccer, and I've, I've got to get another child to, to dance, and you know I've got to mow the yard this afternoon, but before I mow the yard, I've got to go over here, and I've got to buy some gas, and after I get done mowing, I've got to come in, and I've got to clean the house, and after I clean the house, I've got to make supper, and it just goes, 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 goes. And we're so distracted that I'm afraid many times we fail to stop and enjoy the presence of Almighty God. But, you know, maybe that's not it for you. Maybe this morning one of the reasons you haven't experienced the presence of God is because maybe your, hearts be, your heart has become hardened. You know, maybe our, our heart is, has grown hard to, to the things of God. I, I can't tell you how many times throughout the years as a minister, I've seen people who, man, they were on fire for God. I mean, they were passionate about God. But then something happens. And they lose that, that fire. They, they lose that passion. And Julie and I, throughout the years, it's, it's kind of interesting, and y'all are going to think I'm crazy, but throughout the years, Julie and I will, will, will be talking about this very subject, and, and one of the things that we've noticed, and I don't know if this is just because I'm the preacher and she's the preacher's wife, but it is so interesting that so many times when, when people's hearts become hard or cold toward God, they become hard and cold towards us. It's very strange. And, and, and I mean, we'll, we'll talk about it in the car. Do you, do you notice how, how cold they were today? And, and how they avoided us today? And, and usually later on down the line, something, something surfaces. 
Look at Matthew chapter 13, verses 14 through 15. This is what Jesus says, and He's quoting from the prophet Isaiah, talking to the people of Israel. He says, You will be ever hearing, but never understanding. You will be ever seeing, but never perceiving. For this people's heart has become what? Calloused. They hardly hear with their ears, and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes. Their hearts, they they hear with their ears and, and understand with their hearts and turn. And he says, I would heal them. In other words, here's a group of people that... You know, they can, they can see, but, but really, he says, they're, they're blind to the things of God. And, and, and they can hear, but, but they, you know, they, they can't really perceive and, and understand the, the things of God, the, the message that, that Jesus is sharing with them. And he says, man, I want to heal them. In fact, he goes on later and he says, man, I want to I draw them to me. Like a mother hen gathers her chicks. But he says, here's the problem. He says, their, their hearts have become so calloused and hard. And maybe that's where you're at today. Maybe for, for you, you know, you, you prayed for someone. You know, someone that you love, just like we talked about just a few moments ago. You, you prayed that God would heal them. And you knew that God could. You knew He had that power and you felt like He should, but He didn't. And because of that, it's just like, you know what? Forget you, God. Or, or maybe, maybe that's not it at, at all. Maybe for some of you, you've, you've been hurt by another brother and sister in Christ. And it's just like, you know, if this is what Christianity is about, God, if this is what your church is all about, forget you, God. And it's so sad because I, I think that's what, happened, what has happened to a, a lot of our kids in our, our culture today. I think many times they've been hurt. But because we many times hurt each other, we forget God. And our hearts become calloused and hard towards the, the things of God. But you know what? Maybe that's not it. Maybe for, for you, maybe it's you're living in sin. You know, we many times build this, this wall of sin and, and it hurts our intimacy with God. Isaiah chapter 59 verse 2, 59 verses 1 and 2, and, and we've been looking at this over the last couple of months, but notice God says, Surely the arm of the Lord is not too, too short to save nor his ear too dull to hear. But there's a problem. Notice what it is. He says, but your iniquities, in other words, your sins have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden His face from you so that He will not hear. Now, now let me be very clear right here. If you and I as Christians sin, are we still Christians? This is yes, this is no. Are we still Christians? Absolutely, yes. We're, we're, we're still Christians. I mean, just because we sin doesn't mean that we're lost. It doesn't mean that we're out, out of the game. Because as Christians, we are covered by the blood of Jesus. And, and what's covered is not only our past sins and our present sins, but you know what? Also, those sins that, that we're going to commit in the future. But, but we are forgiven. We are, we are His children. But, but here's the thing. If we continue living in sin, if we continue living in unrepented sin, in, in other words, you're, you're sinning and you're not sorry and you're not turning away from it, then guess what? That is going to negative, negatively affect your relationship with God. For example... Let's say that I sin against Julie, my wife. You know what? I, I, don't, I don't apologize for that. I don't confess that. I just continue right on sinning against her. Maybe it's I'm unfaithful to her. 
Or maybe I belittle her. I'm not respecting her as I should, and I run her down in front of the kids, or I run her down in, in front of other people. Or maybe I, you know, mentally abuse her. You know, I'm, I'm calling her name, telling her she's, she's worthless. Now, I, I, I'm sinning against her, but because I'm sinning against her, does that mean that we're not married? No. But if I continue doing that same sin, it's like I'm taking bricks and I'm just building a wall between her and I. If I continue on to disrespect her and I continue on to talk down to her and I continue being unfaithful and I never, I never ask for forgiveness and I just keep living in that sin, you've got to know that's going to affect your relationship with your spouse. And the same is true with, with God. You know, if we've got some sin in our life and we're not confessing it and we're not turning away from it and we're just living in that sin... We're building a wall. And it separates us from, from Almighty God. But you know what? Maybe, maybe that's not you. Maybe for, for you it's just that you don't know God. You know what I've come to discover over the last couple of years? Is that there are a lot of people who know about God, but they don't really know God. And there's a huge difference. There's a big difference in having a head knowledge of God and just knowing a couple of things about God than there is actually knowing Him and having a relationship with Him. Let me stop right here and say this before we go any further. You know, you may not always feel God's presence. But I want you to know this morning that God is always there. It just may take some faith. In other words, walking with God is never about our feelings. What we feel and, and what we don't feel, it's always about our faith. And, and the good news is, is this, that our faith pleases God. You say, well, well, Slate, how? I mean, how can I have faith in God? Well, what I want to do this morning before we close is I want to share with you hopefully some faith builders and, and really share with you some, some promises about God's presence from His Word. Look at, look at number one. First of all, we will find God when we seek Him. I love Jeremiah 29, verses 13 through 14. He says, You will seek Me, this is the Lord speaking, and what? Find Me. When you seek Me with what? All your heart. He says, I will be found by you, declares the Lord. In other words, God delights in revealing Himself to us. God wants us to, to find Him. In fact, he, he sent His own Son, Jesus, to come down to, to this earth so that you and I, we would know His heart, so that we would know His nature, so that we could have an intimate relationship with Him. God, God wants us to seek His presence. But, but I want you to understand this morning that it's not like a, a hide-and-seek game. Okay? It's not like God is, is hiding over here and you and I, we're, we're looking for Him. And, and you know, you're, you're getting a little bit hotter, you're getting a little bit hotter. Oh, now you're getting cold. You know, no, no now you're getting a, a little bit warmer. It, it, it's not like that. Whenever we seek God, God steps out and He says, I'm here. I'm right here. You say, man, that's, that's what I want. You know, but, but Slate, how do I seek God? Let me just share a couple of things with you this morning. First of all, 
I would suggest to you this morning, open up God's Word and read it daily. This is God's Word, and, and it's really a, a book all about Him. And so if you want to have a relationship with God, if you want to know more about God, then, then get into His, His Word. Study it. Read it. But then also, let me also su suggest this, pray. You know, talk to God in prayer, and you may say this, this morning, well, Slay, I, I don't know how to talk to God. Well, just talk to God like you would a friend. That's what I, that's what I do. I, I'm in my car, and, and I'm, I'm telling God about my day. And, and I'm, I'm just, you know telling God my concerns, and I'm, I'm sharing those things with Him just, just like I would you, just like I would a, a friend. But talk to God in, in prayer, and, and then lastly, let me also mention this, worship Him. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 says that when we worship God as we should, that even unbelievers that may be in our assembly will say, God is really here among you. I don't know if you felt that this morning or not, but I did. I mean, I was so encouraged by the singing and, and Daryl. And, and I mean, just, I, I'm telling you, I, I could feel the presence of, of God this morning. And it was just awesome being able to come before Him and worship Him and, and praise Him for who He is. He is so good. You know, I think so many times we're just not tuned into it. I thought about bringing a, a radio up here this morning because I think probably our 20 and under crowd probably wouldn't even understand what that is. <laughs> okay? In fact, let me break it down for you. For, for our 20 and younger crowd, there was, there was a, a device years ago called the radio. Okay, and, and, and they're still around. They still exist. And, you know, radio waves, they, they feel the air. Okay, you, you can't see them, but, but they're, they're there. And you could take, I'm telling you teenagers, you could take this little device, and it had an antenna on it, and you could raise that thing up, and you could turn that device on, and guess what? You'd start to hear music. Or you could hear the weather. Or, or you might even hear some, some talk radio. But it, but it was amazing. You, you put that little antenna up and it, it tunes in to that radio and it starts playing it. And in a similar sense, you know, God is here, but I'm afraid so many times we don't have our antenna up. We're not tuned into Him. We're not studying His Word as we should. We're not talking to Him in prayer. You know, and, and maybe we're not even concentrating and, and focusing on, on worshiping Him. We've, we've got some restaurant in mind that we're going to go to after the last amen. But if we'll tune in, He'll reveal Himself to us. Let me also say this, uh, another promise about God's presence is, you know what, we can do life. We can do life with God's presence. And man, I get excited about this. You see, God's presence is not just in this building today. God's presence isn't just when, when we come to, to this building and sing some songs and hear a message. In fact, look at John chapter 14, verse 16. Listen, listen to what Jesus says. As I will ask the Father, and He will give you Another advocate to help you and be with you what? Forever. The Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept Him. In other words, they're not tuned in to God because it neither sees Him nor knows Him. But listen to what He says. But you know Him. Why is that? For He lives where? He lives with you and will be in you. 
That means, you know what, I don't have to come to, to this building, and I'm not encouraging you to forsake the assembly, okay? I'm not doing anything like that. But what I'm saying is, I don't have to be in this building to experience the presence of God. God is always with me. Living in, inside of me, when, when I leave in the morning to take my kids to school, He's with me. When I'm driving down the road, when I get to work, as I'm going through my, my daily routine, God is, is with me. He's, he's inside of me. His, his presence is always there. But then also, one last promise, we can experience God's presence now, this moment. Acts chapter 17, verse 24, talks about how God created the heavens and the earth and, and everything in it. Then in verse 27, He goes on to tell us why. He said, God did, did this so that they would seek Him and perhaps reach out for Him and find Him, though He is not, what, far from any of us. God did all of that he created all of this so that we would seek Him and find Him and have a relationship with Him. But you know what? Here's the bottom line. You know, it doesn't really matter what we feel. What's important is for Him to feel you and me. God, I want you to fill my heart, my adoration, my praise, my worship, my obedience to you. Because ultimately, you know what? This isn't about us. It's about Him. And so whether I feel Him, you know what? I'm going to worship Him. Whether I, I feel His presence or not, I'm, I'm going to praise Him and I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to seek Him. No matter what I feel, I want Him, I want God to fill my heart and my adoration and my longing to know Him. And we already know the good news is God doesn't play hide and seek. When we seek Him, Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, Jesus says, let me tell you something, you're going to find. He's there. If you'll just seek Him. Let me say this as, as we close. I don't know what the reason is right now if you're not experiencing or feeling the presence of God. It may be sin. Maybe a, a hard heart. And if that's the case, either, either one of those, I, I would encourage you today to repent of that. And to seek Him. Because when we seek Him, we will find Him. Let's pray. God, we just come to You this morning seeking You. God, I, I truly believe, and, and I'm, I may not even know their names this morning, but I truly believe that there are some this morning who are looking for You. They are seeking You with, with all their hearts. And God, I, I just pray that You will reveal Yourself to them. As they study Your Word, as they talk to You in prayer, as, as they worship You, God, Help them to, to see You. And Lord, help them to come to You. Lord, I also just know that there may be some in this assembly who may be separated from You right now because they're, they're living in sin. Maybe they're, they're not treating their spouse the way they should. Or maybe it's, it's someone right now who... Um, is unfaithful to their spouse. It could be many things, Father, but I just pray that You'll just peel back the calloused and the cold and help them to start seeking You today. 
And Father, if there's someone here today who has been hurt in some way by some circumstance or even through the church, Father, I just pray that You will help draw them back to You and to just see how much You love them. God, we know this is all about You and not about us. And Lord, we just pray that we'll make that transition more and more each and every day. God, You are so good. We praise You. It's in Your Son's name we pray. Amen. I want to extend the invitation this morning. And if you're here today and, and you're not a Christian, I, I want to encourage you to, to seek God. Get in His Word. If you, if you want someone to, to study with you about God's Word and, and to, to tell you more about Jesus, we've got plenty of people here this morning that would love to share that story with you. Or today, if you are a Christian, and, and like, like I just prayed, there, there's some sort of sin, or, or maybe your, your heart has become hard and, and calloused or cold because of some circumstance in this life. Listen, come forward today. We want to pray for you. You know, we, we want to embrace you and, in, and encourage you in, in whatever way that we can. But if you need to respond, once you come together, we stand and sing.